Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about a sinister minister who will play God. And by playing God, meaning playing matchmaker. In some cases, that minister will receive a revelation from the Lord regarding two people that he plans to bring together in holy matrimony. But if that minister is not in agreement with what the Lord has revealed, he or she, sometimes from the pulpit, will start preaching against one individual to make that person seem as if that person is not worthy to be in a marriage with the other person. In other cases, there are times when a minister will get fixated on a person and will try to acquire that individual for him or herself. And that person will abuse his or her spiritual authority, gifts and calling, and twist scriptures in an effort to manipulate someone into an ill-advised marriage. I'm going to provide some examples, things that were said in an actual case, where an actual person who, who says, who professes to be a minister of God, what this individual did in an effort to get married. When it comes to twisting scripture, in Isaiah 1, verses 19 through 20, it states, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. I mentioned about, if you're willing and obedient, eating the best of the land. Well, very soon after, it became apparent that the minister was referring, it was a self-reference to being the best and that the Lord wanted the sheep, so to speak, to marry that minister. But the sheep didn't like the minister, couldn't envision in this lifetime or ever loving the minister. So the minister said, it is not a love match it's a God match, and that the love will come later. But that caused much turmoil because, again, the sheep couldn't ever see loving that minister. Because, like, either you have it or you don't. And the sheep was not attracted to that minister in any way, not even spiritually, which is something that is necessary for a God ordained relationship. But the minister persisted. And nothing about it's a God match and not a love match. That was also twisting scriptures because God is love. And why wouldn't he ordain a relationship that's going to have love? And also when you look at the story of Leah and Jacob. Jacob was married to Rachel. Or correction, Jacob was engaged to Rachel. For seven years, and on the day of the marriage, he thought was marrying um, Rachel. They consummated the marriage. But the following morning, he woke up, and whoa, he saw the light, and it was Leah. He had married Leah, who pretended to be Rachel. And that is how some ministers do. They inject themselves in a situation where they don't belong. Some people can argue that that was a God match and not a love match. I don't agree. And you can watch other videos I've done about that. And I think about love coming later. When you look at the example of Leah and Jacob, he never loved her. A part of why the Lord started allowing Leah to have children is that Jacob actually hated her. In fact, let me go to Genesis 29 and read exactly what it says. In verse 20 or verse 31 of Genesis 29, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. The Lord saw that she was hated which came as no surprise 
because she deceived the man into a marriage, knowing that he didn't love her. And you can look in Genesis 29 and 30 to see how things kept on happening to let you know that Jacob did not love Leah. And he didn't cleave to her. And I can imagine so because she was deceptive. And in all those years he was attracted to Rachel, if he wanted to marry Leah, he would have asked Laban to marry Leah from the beginning. But no, Leah injected herself into the situation and it became a painful life for her. But it was a self-inflicted wound. But back to the story I was telling you about a minister trying to force, manipulate, use witchcraft to get someone into an ill-advised marriage. When the sheep was complaining because there were issues, Samuel told Saul that obedience is better than sacrifice. The minister also used those terms about obedience being better than sacrifice and about being obedient to God. But the minister took it to what could be termed an all-time low by comparing the sheep's turmoil to Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, asking the Father to remove the cup from his hands. But if it was his will, that he would do it. And Jesus was in the garden, basically sweating blood. He was under serious distress. And that is how the sheep was. However, the sinister minister didn't care. The sinister minister wanted to get married. Regardless of what the Lord had in store for the sheep. And was even willing to use Jesus' situation to make the sheep feel as if that was God's will and the sheep was going through the same thing Christ was going through. <sighs> Despicable. For the minister to say that Christ understands what you're going through because he did the same. Christ's sacrifice was different. And I can't think of anywhere in the Bible where the Lord asked or told someone to marry someone they didn't love. When the Lord told Hosea to marry someone, he said, go marry a promiscuous woman. He didn't say, I know you don't love Gomer, but marry her. No. And in every testimony I've heard about God-ordained relationships, I have never heard of one where the Lord wanted someone he loved to go and marry someone they didn't love. But sinister ministers are of the Antichrist because even though they may not come out and preach against Christ, they try to stand in place of Christ. Yes, there are times when the Lord will reveal to a third party that he wants two individuals to get married. And if the Lord instructs a third party to let those individuals know, then they should. But a sinister minister will try to get in the way of the Lord's plans by any means necessary to include twisting scriptures. And by the way, it is said that God hates divorce, but there are times when the devil hates divorce more than God. And a sinister minister, if he or she is able to ensnare a person into a marriage with him or her, that sinister minister will hate divorce even more than God, simply because it is to his or her benefit. And chances are, if that sinister minister does not use manipulation, witchcraft, to get someone into a marriage, that person would remain single for the rest of his or her life. Do not 
play God.